This is uh, actually the runoff of the spring that we're going to. We're kind of way up here in the mountains, as you can you can see. It's not a very practical spring to bring a like a five-gallon glass carboy, but it's a nice spring nonetheless. And this is the runoff from it. So basically, we're just following the runoff until we get to the source. And uh, I think it's about 50 yards, a little bit higher. But I'm making a digging stick because what we're gonna do is. Uh, dig down into the, the source of the spring a little bit so that we can pipe it and that's what this copper pipe is for too um, so yeah I instead of bringing a shovel up here and looking like a, a construction worker in the in the mountains I'd rather dig with something natural right so yeah but I'll show you when we get up there hey it's James Wood here um, I'm up in the mountains above Genoa Nevada it's a little town on the edge of the Sierra Nevadas uh, on the other side of Lake Tahoe and we've hiked up to the spring today to kind of do like a little demonstrational video on how to properly pipe a wild spring so that you can get water from it because there's a lot of videos and information out there floating around on the internet on how to get water from a spring that already is piped as well as the benefits from getting or from drinking the spring water but i haven't really seen anything specifically on constructing a way to get water from a wild spring out of the ground and as you can see from this spring here it's just coming straight out of the ground, kind of deep in there. And really, there's no way that I could fill a bottle up, let alone a five gallon glass carboy, to actually get water to drink from this. So what I'm gonna do today is take this copper pipe and construct a way to basically have it stuck in the ground, the rock that's deep in there, and then have some flow come off so that we can stick a bottle underneath it. And, um, this spring's kind of famous around the town of Genoa, at least, because I, I, a lot of people know about it, pretty much, is, I guess, the bottom line. And um, it's, it's not really a practical one to come up to to get your water from for drinking, just because it's so high up. And it's, I mean, I don't know, it's like a mile to get up here. So it's more of a spring that I like to come to and just kind of sit and relax and have some food or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, we'll do a little demonstration on how to pipe this spring and I'll be back with you guys in a second. All right, so I just wanna tell you guys a little bit about spring water and what it means to me and what I think it means to a human living in you know, a certain ecosystem. Um, I got into spring water about a little over two years ago when I was in New Zealand and uh, I heard someone talking about the benefits of drinking spring water and I went out and found some springs around New Zealand that were actually pretty sacred to the indigenous population there. They're called the Maori. And I found out all kinds of interesting stuff, just things like women used to give birth in the river that was coming off of the spring. And um, th there's a spring called Pupu Springs in New Zealand that's the cleanest water in the Southern Hemisphere. And I don't know, there's just all this lore around springs and I kind of, uh, I knew that there was something special about them. So. Once I got back to the States after that trip, I started drinking spring water. Um, it was actually a spring in Southern California. And what I realized is that it was, I mean, it was fun to go. And that was initially why I went. But after a while, I started to realize that I was making my body, like the 75% or so part of my body that was water, I was making that out of where I lived, my ecosystem. And that was kind of profound. It really shifted my, my paradigm, I guess, on my place in my ecosystem and realized that I was connected. And I really think that drinking spring water from your ecosystem is like a direct line to like the planet, I guess, if you will. And uh, just getting in more, more in touch with the, with the earth. And that may sound a little bit airy-fairy or whatever, but it's real. I mean, um, once you start drinking the water from your ecosystem, you start having a lot more 
intuition about what's going on in your ecosystem as well as respect for your ecosystem because you realize that you're getting your nutrition from it. So you start to treat it a little bit differently. And um, yeah, and it's also just fun to come up here into the spring and the mountains. I mean, if you take a, like, a shot around and check out this, this pine forest, it's a pretty pristine environment and it's just, it's nice to come up here and breathe some fresh air and get a little good sunlight too. And um, this will definitely be a place that I come to quite often. So the main thing that I wanted to just cover today, the reason this, I was making this video is to demonstrate how to pipe this, this spring, because right now it's not very practical to get water from. So yeah, I, um, I think, think that this will inspire some people to actually get out there and get some water and you know it's like where the rubber meets the road or where soul meets body or whatever it's you just got to do it <laughs> just get it into your system and it'll do the rest so all right so I also wanted to mention that I'm using a copper pipe uh, I bought it from a hardware store and copper I think is probably the best option for piping a spring as opposed to like PVC plastic or anything that's going to leach or even steel um, I've seen a lot of galvanized steel pipes coming from springs and I always see rust on them I always see buildup and um, I know that construction workers or you know people building a house will use copper pipes in the water system so that it doesn't leach anything and they don't rust and they last a long time so I'm just kind of replicating that um, out here and it just kind of looks kind of cool too against all these pine needles and stuff too so also yeah but um yeah so let's check it out so you're kind of clearing out an area here so that the the pipe can uh, come out straight and then there can be a uh, room underneath it yeah to put like a bucket or a, a bottle exactly because if i go in far it kind of is leaning up and it also can't flow out properly so what I want to do is just kind of dig down like right here so that there's a little area for the pipe to flow downwards mm -hmm. so that water can flow from it. So you got a lot of construction going on there it looks like. All natural. Yeah, just trying to get the clearest water I can to come out of this pipe right here. I mean, it's looking really good and I'm getting a lot of water. It's got a great flow. Yeah, but I just want to perfect it, you know, make it look really nice and appetizing, if you will, to drink out of. Now, these bushes around it are going to, like, hide the spring in the summer. In the... Yeah, I'm not actually sure what they are, but the buds are starting to come out on them because the springtime's coming. But what this is going to do for this spring is kind of protect it from the sun as well as like the cedar tree right here and this pine tree it's just it's uh it's kind of incubating the integrity of the spring i guess you could say and um so tell us how the spring comes out of the ground yeah well typically from my understanding and all the research that i've done and just from drinking this, this water for two years now at a glass Water percolates down through the topsoil, through clays, through sands, through, you know, different organisms that filter it, really all those things filter it, and then it hits bedrock, but it'll find a crack to go down in the bedrock. So above the bedrock is a ground, like groundwater, where well water comes from. So that water is somewhat, like, iffy, I guess you could say, depending on your location. But this water that creep, that can like seeps down through cracks into the bedrock, it finds its way way deep down, sometimes way, way down there in the dark, cold rock um, part of the earth. And then it starts filling up empty space and creates an aquifer. And that aquifer can sometimes take a long time, like thousands of years to fill up. And once it fills up, that the source or the... Um, the pressure from the, the other waters keeps coming down and pushing it, and then eventually it's it's full. It can't go anywhere else, so it starts to go up, back up to the surface through whatever principle that that is. And again, it, it goes through clays, silts, sands, and all kinds of stuff um, to detoxify it, and then it breaches the surface at a spring, like the source of the spring, like this, 
And so who knows where this water actually came from initially and how old it is, how long it's been incubating and just like, you know, sitting in the ground or in, in the bedrock. Um, but now it's come up like totally fresh and ready to drink. So you can taste that when you, when you drink this water, you know, and uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing. So I, I guess the reason that we're here is to protect the integrity of where this is coming out basically and and kind of revamp it a little bit make it look nice make it look appetizing and make people want to come and drink this water you know i think a good thing is a lot of people won't hike up and find this it's pretty well hidden yeah and i mean even if they do they're not going to do anything to it because now that we built it up a little bit it looks a little bit more sacred too you know and somebody's not going to want to just I don't know. There's nothing they can do to Gen it. Generally, <laughs> hikers are more uh, ecologically responsible, exactly. too. Exactly. People that are going to come up here a mile and a half are not like the beer-drinking, can-throwing kind of people. Right. And uh, that's kind of special also, you know. So it's like a little treat when you come up here and see this copper pipe with some crystal clear water. It's like, thank you to whoever did this, you know. <laughs> well, it'll be a mystery. Nobody will know. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the construction is pretty much finished. Um, what I did was I kind of dug down a little bit. I put this big rock here, and it kind of looks like like a Zen garden waterfall, moss covered kind of thing. Um, made it look really nice. I, t I put the pipe over it so it's kind of angled so that the water can flow downhill still. And then I, I, I went ahead and threw this big rock on top just to hold the pipe in place. And uh, it's basically flowing in from behind, and the top part of the water, so the surface layer, which is like free of dirt, sand, and clays, or whatever is, is coming out, um, it's just the pure water coming out. So what you can do next is just fill up your bottle, or go straight from like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, this will be a spring now that I can just come up and fill up a bottle, and after a while too, this will clean itself out kind of. So. Even if there is still some sand or whatever coming out, maybe after a day at the most, um, it'll be pure, clean water that's just flowing straight over the pebbles and rocks that are up there. So, yeah, but thanks for uh, checking this video out, and I hope that this kind of inspires you to go out there and, you know, find a spring and maybe make it a little bit nicer, you know, because I've been to a lot of springs that are just really run down, and I mean, they have good water still, but... You can tell that they've been degraded just because people have come and visited it and filled up their bottles. And I mean, I found trash and beer cans and whatever. Um, so yeah, just treat these with some some respect because they are pretty sacred places. And I mean, if you're making your body out of this water, you wanna treat it nice and make it look nice too. So. Yeah.